Hey guys, hope you're having a good week so far. I finally had a second to sit down and do a video for you. I know it's been like two weeks now, I think, since I've been able to do anything. It's just been crazy as all hell, but I'm finally getting back to it. So, um, yeah, if you haven't noticed, I'm uh, growing my beard out. It's uh, for my Halloween costume this year. I finally found out what I'm gonna be, so. Anyone out there has a beard that's watching this, you'll understand the pain of like the itchy stage. It's miserable, but. Anyways, I guess I can catch you up on what's been going on. Uh, it's been very exciting the past couple weeks. I got to go to Catalina Island about two weeks ago with my babe and her family. Um, her cousin was getting married, so I got to do photos for the wedding, so that was awesome. And I don't know if you've ever heard of Catalina Island. If you've seen Step Brothers with Will Ferrell and John C. Riley, it's the Catalina wine mixer, that island. That's the place, and it's absolutely phenomenal there. If you ever get a chance to go there, go, because it's amazing. Um, let's see what else has happened. Uh, Nick came down. I don't get to see him that much because he lives pretty far up north, but yeah, Nick came downstairs with me. We got to really revamp some like ideas for our new release of the album this year, and so that's very exciting. His wife came down, and we had like a little tattoo party, and did some face tattoos for those guys. And she got Nick's name right here along her jawline. Um, I have a picture. I'll probably put it in the video, like right there. Bam. How about that? Uh, anyways, yeah, that's pretty. Uh, crazy to get someone's name tattooed on your face. That shows a lot of commitment. Um, it's pretty it's pretty crazy to see how in love those two are. It's really cute. And it's just crazy to see how happy Nick is with a woman. Finally, I've never seen him so happy with a woman before, so I'm really happy for him. I'm happy to see all that. So, um, anyways, yeah, I've been uh, catching up on all your guys' emails that you've been sending me for like questions and advice or whatever, and it's kind of blown my mind. You know, I barely started this page, this YouTube page, not too long ago and I haven't really put much energy towards it because I have so much stuff going on but the amount of responses and feedback and support has been like phenomenal and it's really motivating me to want to do more of these videos you know like I'm doing these videos for you guys and I enjoy editing and everything but you know at the end of the day I like helping people and it's fulfilling knowing you guys appreciate it so I got an email here the other day that I thought I can give some good advice on and said here it is it says okay so I'm in a band and the other members and I agree that we don't want the singer in the band anymore how can we fire him without sounding like complete pricks? That is a really good question. Um, situations like that are always going to be uncomfortable and awkward, so, you know, expect that. It's, in my opinion, it's much like uh, breaking up with someone you've been dating. Um, although you might not, like, hate that person, like, you gotta realize they're still a human being, they're still gonna have feelings, you know, and a situation like this, um, you know, being uh, kicked out of a band could be a, uh, it could really crush someone, you know, especially if they're really invested or they really care about the band, you know? You know, and it looks like in this email, you uh, you want to keep him as a friend or else you wouldn't be worried about sounding like a prick, right? Um, I've had to deal with this a lot. I've personally kicked out three members and get scared and multiple others in previous bands. So I've had a little experience with this and it never gets any easier. <laughs> it never gets more comfortable or anything like that. It's always going to be awkward. It's always going to suck, but you know, you have to step up and do those things if you, know, you want to progress or do what you feel is going to make you truly happy, you know? And so you got to do it. All right, I'm going to give you my best advice on how I think you should go about this. And then I'm going to tell you a little story about when I kicked Joel Favier out of Get Scared. Uh, that was interesting. But anyways, yeah, I'm going to tell you that as an example. Maybe that can give you guys some insight. But anyways, what I think you guys should do is, you know, like I said, this is always going to be uncomfortable and you you know you may want to lean towards texting or emailing or phone call don't do that that's uh i think that's extremely disrespectful um you know if you guys care about this person uh you owe them the respect of being a group you know you're a band bands are supposed to be like brothers you know it's like a bond so you have to treat it like that and you have to make sure every band member's there you know no one gets an out of the awkward situation you have to all do this together you know and so Call the meeting, make it happen, and then just start the conversation as in, you know, reassuring them that you care about them as a person and you love them as a friend, all those things, you know, so like, you know, it's nothing personal like that. And then keep all the attention on the project. I wouldn't make it such a personal thing to that band member, you know, because the more you do that, the more it's going to, you know, become an emotional thing and it, it shouldn't be, you know, it's going to be hard, but they'll get over it, you know, especially if you make them feel comfortable, they'll appreciate that, I promise. Just be genuine, be a human, you know, and, you know, if it turns into um, an emotional argument, which it might, you know, you never know how people react to uh, news like that. But just the best you can do is 
try to calm them down, try to, you know, try just try to make the situation as light as it possibly can be and just try to be the good person in the situation. You don't want to be the bad guy. You want to be like, you did this and this and start an argument because that's going to cause resentments and it's just, you know, life's too short for bullshit like that, you know? It doesn't need to be that way. You'd be amazed on what happens when you're just good to each other, you know? Just show love, show respect, treat people like humans. It's not, you know, it's not very hard. On that note, I'm going to, I'm going to tell you that story about Joel. Um, right, well, he lived in Florida, so he would come fly out here and stay at my house for, you know, extensive amount of time so we could practice and, you know, record and write and stuff. So all, a lot of his belongings were here, and um, this is where we had the meeting to have everyone meet up. I remember that night so specifically. Um, yeah, I was sitting on the couch, and then Joel was next to me in a rocking chair, and then it was Brad, Adam, and Dan, and like folding chairs were like sitting in a circle. And then, you know, we sat down, and it just got super quiet and awkward, and everyone just kind of like had their eyes down, like looking down, and Joel was just like, what's going on? And then my, I just had to turn to him, and I had to start the conversation. I was like, look, man, like, we write good music together and this has like been fun, but in the long run, we don't really feel like this is the right move for us to be working together on this project. You know, like you're a super, super talented person and you know, we'll support whatever you do in music. But you know, as far as Get Scared goes, like we feel like we need to, you know, take this different route. At the time we were reconnecting with Nick, he was living in California. And then, you know, we really got that excitement of our vision with what we imagined when we first started Get Scared, you know, like Get Scared is us, you know, without Nick, me, Brad, Dan, Adam, if it wasn't, if it was anyone else, it just wouldn't be what we envisioned, you know? You have to be very selective with people that you have on your projects, especially ones that you're extremely passionate about and have other people have that same energy and power in mind and you are on a wavelength on the same level, you know? And so when you find those people, you gotta, you gotta hold on to them. And then the other ones, even if they're talented, you have to let them go if the if the vibe isn't there, you know. And so we kind of just elaborated on that, and then we did we kept all the personal stuff outside of it, you know. And um, you know, he was obviously a little upset, but he respected the fact that we got together and showed him, that, you know, like we're here because you know this is a professional thing. We care about, you know, we don't want to upset you, and this is nothing negative. This is strictly for the project. You know, after that, you know, it, it went very well, and he understood. Thankfully, you know, um, but the awkward part about that was like all of his stuff was here. And so like me and him had to go and I like, instantly started like helping, like packing his stuff. It was literally just like a breakup. That's how this stuff is. But you know, you gotta do it. So I was, you know, I'm helping him pack his stuff. And you know, all the other guys are here just like hanging out and you know, the mood was lightened, but it was still awkward as all hell. And then finally got his stuff packed and then he left. And then, you know, we all just like, all right, you feel so much better after you do this. Like right when it's done, it's just like, oh God, I'm so glad that's over and we can finally move forward with this. And then the excitement came. We got Nick out here like a week later. We practiced for like four days and then we left on tour again. And it's just like, we started right where we left off and it's like, mm, we are, are, we're a band again. That wouldn't have happened if we didn't take the awkward step of going there, you know? Like who knows where we would be right now if we just kind of neglected what needed to be done. All right, I think I'm gonna wrap this up though. I don't wanna make this video too long, but I hope this gives you guys some good insight and helps you out with that situation. Um, one last note though, I started an email list. I'll leave a link in the description box below, but I've been sending out weekly emails of just like things I've learned lately, things that's motivated me, inspired me, just life stuff, I don't know, but I think you guys might really like it, so check that out. Um, subscribe to my video if you haven't. Like this video, comment, tell me what you think. I fucking love you guys. Thank you so much for the love and support. It really means a lot. And yeah, till next time, peace.